So I'm going to start with your challenge in uh, English grammar and vocabulary, right? So you, you know, uh, this is the page and uh, you can see you have to go down uh, to find uh, grammar and vocabulary challenges, right? So here it is, the challenge 50. Uh, that is the challenge uh, when it comes to English grammar and vocabulary. So I will be discussing uh, on this challenge, right? Let's go inside. Okay, uh, so this is the learning outcomes, right? So you have to click one of these, right? You can see, right? Okay, right? You can see there is a video. Shall we uh, watch this video together and go to the lesson? So here, this video is uh, about, uh, tells us about uh, the importance of why we should uh, learn uh, the grammar in our language, English. Okay, how important it is when it comes to uh, uh, the language of English in uh, work and also in your academic writing. So uh, let me play this so you all can watch it. Uh, it's a three or four minutes video, right? So let's watch it together. Recent advancements in modern technology and spell check to Skype Communicating with people is easier now than it has ever been before. But because of these new technologies, many people are starting to wonder, does grammar even matter anymore? I mean, does it even matter if you know the difference between who and who? Or between there, there, and there? To answer if grammar matters, we first have to answer another question. What is grammar? According to Wikipedia, grammar is a set of structural rules that govern the composition of clauses, phrases, and words in any given natural language. Whoa, whoa. Okay, so what does that even mean? Governed by natural laws, and our speech is no different. Whether you know it or not, every time you're talking, you're using those laws in some way. Grammar has defined, albeit loose, laws that we all must adhere to if we want to be understood. When you try to ignore a natural law, things tend to go poorly. For example, if you wanted to ask a girl out on a date, but didn't know the proper rules of grammar, it may come out as date, go, walk, out, be, with. Chances are, if you asked a girl out like that, she would run screaming from you and never look back. <laughs> Well, at least they're always cats. Grammar is the vehicle by which we communicate with the world around us. It allows us to build relationships, share ideas, and even argue in the comment section on YouTube. Grammar is one of the bedrocks of our society, and without it, our world would easily crumble into chaos within a few days. I mean, imagine waking up in the morning, and all of a sudden nothing you or anyone else said made any sense anymore. I guess what I'm trying to say is, grammar clearly matters. But some people may argue it's not how you say it, it's what you say. And you know what? I would agree with them. While there's certain people that think of grammar as trying to make every sentence sound perfect, that's not what I'm advocating for. But I Many different subcultures have their own dialect that may sound odd, even incoherent to outsiders, but sound perfectly normal to those people in the subculture. Should we stomp on their culture in the name of good grammar? Of course not. E, grammar is the ability to clearly and effectively communicate your thoughts and ideas to the world around you. And if you can do that in your own lingo, more power to you. So if the world around you looks different than the world around me, that's okay. Celebrate that fact. But broaden your horizons. If you know that you're going to have to go into the business world one day, you should understand that you'll have to communicate differently in that world than you would at home. While knowing how to use there, there, and there correctly might not matter on Facebook, Probably will matter if you're trying to get a job. If you can't eliminate that, you can't do it. You can't do it. How do you think a client feels when they get into detail with small mistakes? Probably not very confident. Grammar and writing aren't things that should isolate us from our surroundings. They're things that should bring us closer to the people we care about. Grammar isn't about making people feel left out or looked down on just because they don't know how to use a semicolon. Grammar is about so much more than that. tell them that they have no idea what they're talking about, and then throw an apple at them. Oh, and has anyone seen my cat?
Okay. Uh, some of you uh, sent message saying the volume is low. You are unable to hear. It's all right. You can go into this page and uh, uh, again play this video. I just played this video, so uh, you can uh, you know you can have an idea why grammar is so important when it comes to learning English. Right. So in this challenge, right, when you go down, there are these lessons that you have to do, right. So here we go to this section. Right, we go to this section and uh, voice is very low. Okay, hold on, let me check on that. Oh, right. Okay, sorry, it was muted. Uh, can you hear me now clearly? Yes, miss. Right. Yes, miss. There was a technical issue from this side. Right, going back to the lesson. So you go there, you select lesson one, and then you come to the topic, topic one. You select grammar topic one. And you have a lot of grammar work activities in this section, right? So today in my session, I am going to look at these, some of these uh, basic grammar uh, topics that I'm going to discuss with you, right? Now you might wonder, now that you have started doing a degree and why are we to study the basic grammar in English? Actually, it's very important that you have your basic of the grammar in English strong and perfect. Then when you keep on writing, your language will become uh, advanced by uh, doing more and more activity. That is why we have brought up this challenge for you. So uh, I will be starting today discussing about different tenses. Okay, so you have here also the past simple, right? Um, these tenses form right, present continuous, present simple, right? So you can go in and do the activity here, right? After my discussion, you can come to this page and you can do these activities in this page, right? So I just wanted to start up by showing you how uh, the, uh, the topics uh, look like inside this uh, FCB challenge, right? Okay, now let me go into my presentation. Okay, so I'll be discussing today uh, the first basic things that you should know. Now, uh, before I start, I would like to tell you, because most of you have studied in uh, Sinhala medium or Tamil medium, right? The sentence structure in that is different when it comes to the English sentence structure. So this structure needs to be learned correctly by your first thing, right? Because most of the time, 
many of the students you think in either in tamil or in sinhala language construct your sentence and then you translate into english which is not correct because our subject our structure of the sentence is completely different right so you have to first learn that so i will show it to you in this uh, while i am discussing this right so verb tenses is what i will be focusing uh, in this part right so first we are going to introduction so what is verb tenses right right what is verb tenses we know in a sentence we have subject verb and object right okay we, for example if i say mala place badminton so mala becomes a subject place becomes the word and badminton becomes the object right so we are going to focus on the middle part of that sentence which is quite important when it comes to our writing especially when it comes to our grammar right so verb tenses indicate what the time of an action event or condition by changing its form so when we come across verb tense there is this present tense past tense and future tense right so verb tenses is to indicate the time so a verb will always tell us in a sentence the action when it took place that is the function of the verb simply remember that okay so moving on to the next so based on time frame right we have three common tenses right okay that which you all know generally right present tense past tense and future tense right so present tense is to express an unchanging repeated or reoccurring action or situation that exists only now it can also excuse me ma'am widespread uh, yes excuse me we can't end the slide now sorry we can't end the slide uh, we can see verb tense slide only all oh, right you can't see the slide okay give me a minute thank you for telling me that i again reshare the screen Okay, now can you see? Yes, can. Yes. yes okay. So, uh, we know present tense means simply. You all should know present tense means it is an action that is taking place at the moment, right now, right? It is. Uh, uh, it is not changing. It is not repeating. Right? It keeps existing at the moment, right? An action that is taking place right now. for that we say present tense and then we say past tense that is to express an action or a situation that started and finished in the past right so past tense refers to an action that took place in the past and it is completed in the past okay and then the third one is future tense so future tense means to express an action that will take place in the future so the action has not taken place yet it is an action that we refer to that will take place in the future so simply you all know generally present tense past tense and future tense so these tense verb comes here as an important role because they keep changing in their spellings and in their form when you write them in present tense past tense and future tense so that is what you have to keep focused when writing the sentences especially when you are writing different sentences in different tense forms okay moving to the next slide okay based on aspects now there are other types of tenses 
one we looked at one we looked at as indefinite or simple present tense which means it describes an action but does not state whether the action is finished so in the simple tense form we don't tell that this action now finished but we just tell this action is taking place that's all so there is no end is not mentioned in that tense form then the second one comes as the continuous or progressive tense which means the action is keep on going but not finish right so this is called an action that is unfinished action describes an unfinished action like my mother is cooking right so there is the, the action is keeping on i mean it keeps on going right so we we do we in that sentence we didn't say what time she is finishing her cooking but we just say she is cooking so that is continuous or progressive tense form then we refer to another tense type as perfect or complete tense perfect or complete tense right so perfect or complete tense means to describe a finished action so this tense form is quite advanced tense form when it comes to writing right where you refer to an action that is taken place already in the past but we refer to that action and write the sentence okay and then fourth is perfect continuous tense form now it is a combination of perfect and continuous tenses describes an action which was in progress and then finished so perfect continuous tense form refers to an action that is taking place in the past and then it is keep on progressing and finishing and reaching to the present okay so that is only perfect continuous tense form so like this you have different tense form so you don't need to get confused like looking at this perfect there's so many just learn the uh, the this uh, learn the definition of it and just do few activities on it then you will quickly catch it up right so moving on to the next slide right so let's uh, look at the look at the present continuous tense form today right so present continuous tense form means the action is happening now and is incomplete as i told you it is keep on going and it is not finishing right so it keeps on continuing the action is is continuing or going on right so when we write um, present tense right we use these um auxiliary verbs right okay uh, that is is am are you have to use either one of these in front of this uh present continuous verb form so for singular if it is she or he we use is if it is i you know that we use am if it is we or they plural form we use up okay right so do not forget this this be verb that needs to come before the present continuous tense verb okay right it is compulsory that you use the be verb in front of this verb now look at this example here she is a singular form right she is so the be verb is here she is writing a paper right and they plural are writing assignments now the verb here is write and now it has been converted into present continuous form how by adding ing at the end of the verb so simply we spell write as w r i t e which is in the simple present form right so we remove the e and we add ing so when you see a verb that is having its ending in ing form then know that it is in present continuous tense form right 
So, and the other thing that you should know when you're writing a present continuous tense is identify whether it is singular or plural, then select the right verb here, right? And is, whether it is is for singular, it's is, and for plural, it's are. So use that and make your sentences. So you have an activity here. Type some more examples on the chat. Can you send me some examples? I think students, you all should not use this chat for other, please don't distract uh, for other things, right? Yes, he is singing, they are playing cricket, he's playing game, good. He is reading now. I am sitting on the chair, we are using, okay, he's writing. I see a lot of sentences. I am learning now. We are learning, we are learning English at the moment. She is crying, they are studying BSc. Uh, now BSE degree, you mentioned it completely. She is teaching us, she is playing, they are answering a question, good. Good, now another important thing students, I want to tell you is that when you write a sentence in English, always see that you start your first letter in capital and you have to always check on that because now when we study in Tamil and Sinhala language, we do not have um, capital letters and simple letters. Now in English, it's, it's, it's a rule that when you are starting a sentence, you should begin your first letter with capital. So see that it's all right, even you're sending a message on the chat, try to see that you're fulfilling that rule because that will help you later on not to repeat any mistake. Okay, so good, interesting sentences you all said, right? I'm confusing here, I am, I am confusing here. Mm -hmm. There it's, I'm eating, I'm confusing. That sentence doesn't seem a little bit, a little bit not clear. I'm typing an answer, good, we are learning. Now he's going to school, she's going home, she's watching TV, right, good. Thank you for sending those interesting sentences. Right, okay, moving to the next slide. Right, now, Present simple tense. Now, present simple tense or present tense, right? Simply to make you feel comfortable with the soundings of the tense form. Now, in this tense, right, we do not use the be verb when you are writing the sentence. You can see the structure given here, right? Okay. So, simple tense actually refers to our day-to-day day-to-day uh, -day activity, like uh, she writes a paper, the sun rises in the morning, right? The sun sets in the evening. So we refer to a routine action, an action that you do every day, right? In, uh, in the present, at present, right? It refers to an action that is taking place at the moment. So we refer to it as simple uh, tense form, right? So here you can see the verb formation, learn the verb formation, very important, right? So you have the verb, right? Sometimes you don't need to change the verb. It can remain the same when you're writing, right? Sometimes you will need to change when you are writing. You can do that by adding an S at the end of the verb or adding an ES at the end of the verb, right? Now look at here, the example. Okay, she writes a paper. Now she is singular, so we are adding S, right? At the end of the verb, as she writes a paper, singular form. And the other one, they write assignments. Now this is plural form, they write. Now here the verb did not change, right? So keep in mind, sometimes when it comes to simple present tense form, right, not all the verbs will change. Sometimes it will remain the same. Some we will need to change by adding S or E, especially when it comes to singular form, we will be using S or ES forms, 
right? And most of the time when it comes to plural forms, there is only occasionally we may do the changes for the verb, right? So hope that is clear for you, right? Can you type some more examples on that? I would prefer if you could go for the plural form, which can be a little bit difficult for you to form sentence. Like my grandpa reads newspaper, they study, we sleep, good. They play cricket, he loves, he loves she, no, he loves her. They watch the sunset, he reads book, I study English, we wear clothes, the sun rises in the, it moves. So they go to school, right, good, he waits in, he waits for lunch. Now there is something. He goes to goes to school. We run towards. Right. Okay. I'm getting ample amount of messages coming in. Uh, okay. It's moving fast. Good. But I'm keep on reading your answers of the sentences. He eats an ice cream. She goes to temple. He throws ball. So. What did you learn here? Remember, when you are writing the plural form, right? When it comes to simple tense form, right? The verb will not change in most situations, okay? Right? It won't change. But when it comes to singular form, you will need to add the S or E S, right? Like my mother washes my clothes, right? They now they play cricket, play. There's no change, it's the same, right? Uh, so remember that in plural form, there will be not much changes taking place in the verb. Okay, right. Thank you uh, for sending the sentences. Right, let me now move to the next tense form that we are going to discuss. Okay, that is past simple. Right? So past simple general overview, you know what past tense form is. It is an action that is taken place in the past and then ended and finished in the past. So we refer to an action that is finished in the past. Okay? So formation, now when it comes to this, right? Now there it gets a little bit you, you come across it will become a little bit confusing in the point of the verb change because here we focus on regular verb and irregular verbs, right? So what is this regular verb? Regular verb means those verbs, when they are changed into past tense form, they do not, the, the word does not completely change. But for irregular verb, when you are converting it into past tense form, Okay, the word can change in its spellings, right? Like now, if I say the verb bake, okay, B A K E, I bake a cake, right? Then past tense, I baked a cake, right? So I just added a D for that and I converted into past tense. But if I take the irregular word, verb bite, right? Bite, B I T E. And if I'm converting it into past tense, it becomes bit, B-I-T. So there, the second form of the verb can be seen when it comes to irregular verbs. So not all the verbs are like that. Uh, there are some uh, irregular verbs that you will need to uh, focus when you're converting that verb into past tense form. So some examples I can give for irregular verbs as bleed in the present tense in the past we say bled okay and in the present if we say blow the past will be blue and if i say the present by the verb converting that into past will be bought now that's it it's completely changing the form of the verb word is changing so such verbs we say regular verbs and there are also regular verbs such as uh, 
uh, enjoy, enjoyed, you just add an D or you just add an ED or you just add an IED at the end, right? So here you have been given uh, an example as she wrote a paper. So what is this uh, verb? Is it regular or irregular? Irregular. 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 Right? Irregular. I've sent uh, the sentences. Now, can you all, uh, I am sure that uh, you all are good with the regular verb sentence making. Can you try some irregular verb sentence? Good. The teacher taught the lesson. She taught us a lesson. I went to school. Good. They caught. I ate an apple. I came here. She shared her screen. That is regular verb. They ate ice cream and curry. They bought the books. She made a story. I bought a book. He stole my mobile. That's a good verb, irregular verb. Goalkeeper caught the ball. Okay. He sang. I did my homework. I caught the ball. Good. I ate pizza, ate, okay, sang, good. That's a nice uh, irregular verb that you came across. Make him a man, a man, drunk, well, a man. There's a grammar issue there. A little bit, I drank juice, okay. He broke my bicycle, right. I hid the pen, good. I thought very hard. She taught me. She bought a gift. I went to city. He gave a pen. I ate mango. Right. I woke early in the morning. Right. She left me. Okay. Sam flew a kite. Okay. Interesting. You have a good knowledge of the regular verbs. I know this is basic, but when we when we start writing, we make a lot of mistakes in this uh, basics. It's very important that you make. Uh, clear understanding of this and pay attention to that while you're writing, okay? Right, she came home, good. I bought a new pen. Right. They took to us, uh, they took to us, uh, what is that? There. That sentence, Sasimi is not correct. She bit her tongue, a little boy ran away, okay? I flew a kite, I read a book, he took my pen, I cut vegetables. Good, there is no change there. Yeah. I sat on the chair, she ate apple, okay, ate, is there a lot of sentence on that? She drew beautiful picture. She drew, okay, she wrote, a glass. Now broken, that is a different form of a verb. So that cannot come into the past tense. I put the book on the table. I put that is also not a little bit clear in making meaning. I bought a new bicycle. She put things away. No? She threw the things away. I think that should be the correct form. I cut vegetables. Right. Okay. Good. So you all sent uh, enough sentences. I drove the car right. Now those are irregular verbs. So once again, I'm telling you, irregular verbs are verbs that will completely change in <laughs> when it comes to uh, past tense form. Right. And then a uh, regular verb, when you are converting it to past tense, you add a D or an ED or an IED and uh, make your sentence. Okay. Right. Moving on to the next slide. So past continuous. Now, we did look at present continuous tense form. In a similar way, we have past continuous tense form. Okay. So past continuous tense form means a continuing action or state that was happening at some point in the past. So you are referring to an action that is in the past, but it is still happening in the past, right? Okay, so when you are going to write about past continuous sentence or the verb changing, 
right? Okay, you should see that you are using these auxiliary verbs, was or were, right? Very important, okay? Many of the students do not write this while writing the sentence, right? I personally have marked a lot of answers where most of the time students forget to write these was or were. Now that is a very important part when it comes to writing the sentence in past continuous tense as well as bringing out the meaning in the sentence, right? So see that you always remember to write the was and the were, right? So here you can see was is used for the singular form and were is used for the plural form, okay? And then the same way continuous tense, you add ing for the verb. So here was indicates the past and the ing adding to the center, the, to the verb, at the end of the verb indicates the continuous form. So together it becomes the past continuous tense, which gives us the idea that the action that is taking place in the past and it is still keep on going, right? So here is the example. She was writing a paper. They were writing assignments. So were comes to the plural form and was comes to the singular form, right? So can you send some sentences? Okay, you have already started sending messages on the chat. We were playing cricket. We were listening to the lecturer. My sister was okay, it's going super fast to the messages. She was making a cake. No, not making a cake, baking a cake. You have to use the right verb. Uh, she's going home. He was playing football. She was playing boxing. He was working hard. He studied. Uh -huh. He was working hard to pass examinations. That will be good. Uh, they were cutting fruits. Okay. They were studying. They were counting the days. I was yes, playing. Yes. I have problem. Uh, when we say he was eating, when I go or when I'm going. Sorry, he was? He was eating was, uh, is my sentence. Okay. At the end, uh, he was eating when I go or when, I, when I'm going. He was eating when I went. When I when went. I went. Because oh, okay. we are referring to past. So going will be and go or those words will be the present. Right? So he oh. was eating. Now the present continuous tense will be highlighted near the verb was and eat. That is the uh, indication of the past or past continuous tense form. Okay? Oh, and okay. The, the, in the past, the other, all the other things. So you can say he, he was eating when I went to yeah. his house. When I went to his house, complete the sentence. Okay, and the second one should always be in the past form, right? Of course, yes. Yeah, so was the, the auxiliary verb that comes in front of the continuous tense verb will be your past continuous form. Right. Okay. So while I was discussing with him, there was plenty of sentences coming in. I was suffering from fever good while she was playing. I was watching a movie. They were going to temple. I was having dinner. Good. Good sentences. She was talking to a stranger. A log was floating on a river. Good. Right. Okay, so I hope this this uh, this tense form is also clear for you, right? Let's now let's move to the next slide. Then now, okay. So we have come uh, to the end of the slide. Actually, now, do you have any questions? Right now, here you will have to uh, focus on activities. Now, as I said, let me go now. You have to go to that page and do activities on it. Now, I just gave a, a simple explanation on tensors, right? Now, what you have to do is go to the FCB challenges page, select grammar and vocabulary, go to the lesson one, 
select activity one, right? And then, now I discussed no, present, present continuous, past, and past continuous tense forms. Go to those topics and you have to do the uh, activity. So let's do that. And you will also have to go through this uh, topics and do. So let me go and show some of this with you. Okay, can you see the page? I have come back to Future Careers Bridge. I have selected our challenge page. Can you all see the screen? Yes, madam. Right, thank you. Okay, now there are plenty of lessons, right? We can go one by one uh, with the sessions that we do, right? So go to lesson one, right? Right, okay. So here go select activity one, grammar topics, right? So here, let's do some activity. Uh, let's go to present continuous. Now see here are the topics, present continuous, right? Right, so what do you think is the answer that should come here? Which word cannot go in the space? Cannot go. She. 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 Why she. that she? Why not you? Why not you? They are. They are. Who is a single noun? Who is plural noun? Of course. Now you can be plural also singular at certain situations, right? So, uh, you are talking loudly, also correct. They are talking very loudly, also correct. But she, we know it's singular form, so you have to use is. So, show explanation. Now, see, this page is very, uh, very easy to learn, okay? So, you can clear out your doubt by looking at all this, right? Then the structure given here, right? Okay, you the present continuous to talk about an activity which are happening now, right? So here the explanations are given clearly, right? Now here we see uh, the negative form is given. Now see, Look at this explanation. The first is a simple way. Positive explanations are given. I am, you are, he, she, it is, we are, they are. Now then we are going to the negative form. I am not, you are not, or you aren't, right? He, she is not or isn't. We, they aren't or are not here and the verb. Then we come to the questioning form, am I, are you, is she, are we, right? So the rules are explained here. If a verb ends in E, delete the E before you add ing, because that is the ing form always tells the continuous tense form, right? And he he's having lunch, right? So again, he's. So for having, you can, this is, you contract the verb. Uh, you can say he is having lunch or he's having lunch is also okay, right? So question forms are brought in and they have highlighted the common mistakes students make, right? So most of the times, many, many students write in this pattern, she not coming because you forget the be verb. Right, I told you earlier, even the other was and were. This is something common that you make mistake, right? 
So see that you always use the right uh, B verb in front of the continuous tense verb. Okay. Right. So this is on present continuous tense form. So let's go back and see yeah, the topic. Then past simple. Okay, there are 10 questions in this quiz. Read the grammar explanation below, answer the questions. Which word is correct past simple verb? Which is the correct one? Can you tell me? Made. 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 Good. Made. Made. Yes, so there is the explanation. Yes. See, you all can get into this and see everything. Uh, now, uh, the forms changing is shown here. So use the past simple to talk about finished events in the past, use it to tell stories, jokes, or anecdotes. Anecdotes means a short, small story about an incident that you describe to a person that can be considered as an anecdote. So you can see the changes, adding want, wanted, start, started, right? So if there are, uh, if a verb ends in E, just add the D, like hope, the examples are given. If a verb ends in Y, delete the Y and add I-E-D, right? Studied, carried, right? Now we know study spelling is S-T-U-D-Y. Then if you want to convert into past tense, you have to write it as, you remove the Y and you add I-E-D, right? And then if the verb ends in vowels, right? So what you have to do is you have to plus Y, you have to add a Y to it and then write. So play, no. Played is incorrect. Stayed is correct. Stayed is incorrect. So you have to see that you write it correctly here. Right? This is the correct one. But a lot of uh, past tense verbs are irregular. You need to learn each one separately. Here are some examples. So I did discuss this with you. Uh, like have, had, take, took, get, got, make, made. Sit, sat, feel, felt. So many of you uh, brought out that as well. So there is more explanation. So there are common mistakes brought in when you are making question from uh, students. Some students use the past verb in question like, did you saw the film? No. So you said, did you see the film? Right. So these are good explanation, very simple and clear. Go through this. If you how, if you think this there is the the lack there is lacking information, then read all these. Your doubts will be completely clear, right? Let's move to the next. Then there is simple present, right? Okay, can you give answers to this, Alison Emma? Where can you write lives? L-I-V-E-S. Uh, my aunt lives in Scotland. My aunt lives in Scotland. What about the other blanks? What can you write on this? On uh, live. Only live. live. Only live. live. Only I live. live. Because it's in plural form, right? Alice and Emma live in Ireland. I live near Brimmy. Huh. So my aunt lives. Now this becomes... Singular. For I, it will always be live, right? So again, if you uh, open the explanation, you have clear the grid this there, right? And there are sentences given. I come from Japan. I live in Paris. I like animals, right? For I, I have three sisters. So again, you can see for I and you like. He, she, it likes. We, they like. And very important this. Singular, I don't, you don't. Keep that in mind here. For I and you, we use don't, right? Although it is singular. But for he, she, it, we use doesn't. Okay? Uh, then for we, they, we use don't. So most of the time I have noticed 
students uh, getting a little bit uh, you know confused where where when which part should i use the don't and the does do and does right so know this clearly okay right so this is a simple grid that helps you then there is a question form again i this is important to you do i like animals do you like animals then for he she it you have to use does when you are making question form does he like animals does she like animals does it like animals then again for plural form we use do do we like animals do they like animals right and now uh, moving down if a verb ends in consonant plus y change y to i that is a sound y sound comes you can change it to i and add es right like study i study english he studies english okay so if this y comes sometimes when you are writing it in the simple present tense form you need to you need to uh, remove the y and you add ies right then for sh sounds if a verb ends in ch sh ks sh z you have to add es right like watch ch sound th right and miss double s then you have to add es then x in if the verb is ending in x you have to use es and when you are sh if the verb is ending in sh you have to use es this is also something that many students uh, make a uh, mistake so know that in the simple present tense when verbs are ending with th double s or x or sh or z right you need to add es to convert into simple present tense form then the other one i go she it, when you convert it it becomes goes i do becomes does i have it becomes has and some of the common mistakes brought in here uh that students make now see my mother like chocolate so it's incorrect you have to have an s here my mother likes chocolate right and then here come no work negative form as we discussed here right right there this doesn't right you should see that you are using it there form doesn't work here right so for singular we use doesn't uh except for i and u uh for the other singular form we normally use this this right so we don't use you like this song always you have to use the do or does when you are making question in simple tense form do you like this song or does your father work here right is your father work here is also incorrect so do not do this try to use these do and does does right then uh, i think in the presentation slide i showed you that you will have to look into some other sections uh, that is uh, adverbs of frequency right go after the session ends when you are uh, there you can learn this go through this right and read the explanation right and do the activities right you have to do adverbs of frequency comparatives and superlatives right okay so it's there it is all there in the lesson 1 right uh, let me go back to my slide right so as i as i just showed you can you see the slide i have changed yes right yes ma'am so yes. now after this session finish try to go uh, check on these topics go through these topics these are again simple grammar topics now there are lesson 1 2 3 right so step by step your grammar activities will become a little bit advanced where you will get a thorough knowledge about the basic grammar of english language which is going to be very useful for you right in your writing 
don't forget you have to follow your degree completely in english so for that you should have your language perfect right so go through these adverbs on frequency in that page these are the four topics comparative and superlatives then the going to the common uncountable nouns as well right so in if you go one by one and check now let's go back to the page to that page again right here can you see the screen it changed yes madam <laughs> yeah it is yeah and the frequency right so this then superlative comparative right very interesting right you will enjoy doing these activities then going to right this grammar and then uncommon uncountable nouns this is about everyone these words okay so uh, will the recording of this session be available on lms map yes we will see that it will be uploaded i have recorded the session yes don't worry about that okay so uh, that is the ending of today's session i hope you uh, had a uh, idea of how to get into this fcb challenge uh, of uh, grammar and vocabulary there are a lot right so don't go to other topics now itself Uh, step by step let's go ahead because you have more and more sessions coming so we'll go one step at a time and do it slowly and correctly that's important right um excuse me excuse me ma'am sorry for disturbing yeah. are this fcb challenges compulsory for pass this evening compulsory to pass the ec uh i think so you should ask uh, this is actually for your extra knowledge right and there are oh. opportunities that will come once you do all these challenges and submit right so it is compulsory that's why it's uh, given to you no right okay oh, ma'am may i use ousl email for registering for fcb challenges uh yes you can use that but i think uh, you can also use your personal email address as well I did not fit it. Okay, thank you. Right. So that is the end of the session today. Then I will again meet you all soon on Thursday with the Excuse next session. Me. Um. So Excuse I'll find up the session. Any questions? Uh, what about the attendance, madam? Are you taking down the attendance or how to get about for this? session uh this for this session uh, yeah we are taking attendance uh as it's important that you know you attend all the sessions to learn right okay. i am asking about this session have you already taken or you are going to take i don't know how uh it is been taken from the other side actually so nothing to worry excuse me ma'am yes hello all right I have sent an email to change my UGAP class. Right, I have replied. I have sent an email to you to change my UGAP class. You have replied me, but uh, about my uh, to change my Sunday class to Monday. Yes, yes, it is being done. It is being done. You all have to be a little uh, bit patient. We are doing it technically, so it might take uh, a little bit time. You will join from the coming Monday class. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. It's Zahra, no? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excuse okay. me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. About the hard copies of the e-test textbook. Yeah, the books are on the process of sending to you all, right? We are on the process of sending it all together, all your books together. We are about to courier you, so you will have to be a little bit patient. and uh, until then you all can use the soft copy you no know? you all have the soft copy you can download it from uh, the lms page for egap 
right? Yes, okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, can we get those books uh, from the regional centers? Uh, yeah. It is also okay. possible. You can go and check. If it's available, check. Okay, okay ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, right. Then that's it. So I'll wind up the class. So let's meet again soon. Excuse okay, me, ma'am. Uh, now I have been getting some messages. Excuse me, Been ma added to eGap group. Well, email me your S number, your course type, right? And it will be right. Uh, the reason is because you have responded late. That's why you are not attended. You are not into the group. So when you are sent an email with your S number and your post type soon, so that I can check uh, to check the list and then okay. okay. Yes. Excuse me, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Uh, can we submit this uh, English exam English and make uh, grammar activities? We of want course, to submit. Of course. You can submit in the form. How? It's there in the email. How we page. submit? Uh, okay. You can do it and submit today as well. Yeah. You have to submit okay. and come and post it in the forum page. Yeah. Discussion. Okay. Right. Okay, okay. then that's it. Mm -hmm. I'll be ending the meeting. So see you all soon again, right? Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. How can I Excuse get me, this recording? It will be uploaded huh, on the page, yes? Excuse me, ma'am. Sorry? Yes, I am Dirashan. I don't know man, this exam this time. I think 4 o'clock this exam. I am uh, late. What to uh, do? It's okay. How we do, have the recording. You can look at the... It will be uploaded in the page. So you can... Uh -huh. um, you can... Uh,